Hey everyone, it's OSK. I'm gonna cut right to the chase and say I have a bit of some frustration with Spellbreak right now, I'm not gonna lie. I'm sure everyone read the title before clicking onto this video, and if you didn't, I guess I'll take that as a compliment that you clicked on my video without knowing what it's about. But today, we gotta talk about the Aegis Towers for Spellbreak Chapter 1 and how much of a giant mistake this update was. Now, I warn you at the beginning, this video is not going to be a positive one. It's basically me venting out my frustrations and talking about my feelings about the current state of Spellbreak Chapter 1 out to the internet. So, you know what you're getting yourselves into, and as many of you may have noticed, I haven't played Spellbreak in a single stream in about a week. Basically, the day the patch came out, I saw where this whole thing was going with the Aegis Towers and decided I didn't want any part of this. And that's kind of what I'm going to get into today. How the Aegis Towers were a mistake. Now, before we get started, if you like where this is going, consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more Spellbreak videos and other types of content as well. Right now, the other types of content part of that spiel is feeling very real, so maybe get excited for some branching out in the future. We're already playing a ton of Valheim, covering Crimson Desert for the winter season of this year, and you might even see some Xenoblade-related stuff on stream here and there. But anyway, enough of all that. Let's get into this. To start, we've got to talk about the type of gameplay the Aegis Towers of Spellbreak promotes in each match. Each of the five Aegis Towers spawn in a fixed location on the Spellbreak map and encourages a high-risk, high-reward style of drop into the game. Once you start channeling the Aegis Tower, it takes but a second or two to gain the Juggernaut buff and start rampaging through the Hololands. And that's literally all you have to do. Drop it at Aegis Tower, interact with it for a second or two, and boom, you're a god. Plus 100 armor, plus 100 health, plus mana for 30 seconds, and three extra sorceries on each gauntlet for a second and a half of hot dropping. If you can't see the problem here, basically this makes it to where you must hop drop at the very start of a match onto an Aegis Tower to have a viable chance of winning, otherwise it's a coin toss essentially. And yeah, it's fun when you're a juggernaut going against another juggernaut, I will not deny that. The longer time to kill makes the game very enjoyable for the select few who manage to collect the buff. The problem here is that collecting a free buff that not everyone can get is not the most challenging nor fun experience for BR in my opinion. You essentially become a god in game along with four other players and ruffle stomp the other players until nothing but juggernauts are left in the game. And if you're a regular player trying to go up against a juggernaut with twice as much health and many more resources than you, you can see how that makes for a gimped experience. Unfortunately, Spellbreak is not one of those hard outskill games where you can absolutely dunk on your opponents in a 1v3 or in this case a juggernaut versus regular player. The gap there is not that big. As long as the other player is halfway decent at landing their shots, they usually will win when they have a significant advantage in the game. In order for a regular player to take down a full squad or juggernaut, the difference in skill has to be quite large, and that's an understatement. I just want to put that in perspective a little bit. If you're up against a juggernaut as a regular player, the chances you're going to win that fight are probably very slim, especially if they're at least okay at the game. This makes for a very unbalanced playing experience for players with the buff and players without, obviously. The game essentially then boils down to either hot dropping on the Aegis Towers and hoping you activate it before your opponents, or hiding until you can somehow seal out a third party exile on an unsuspecting low health juggernaut, neither of which is a very fun experience in my opinion. That's why I've largely sat this patch out. The gameplay is very one dimensional right now, and therefore not as fun for me. It would be one thing if one player got the Juggernaut buff and everyone was trying to exile the one huge player, but it's five of them, and the buff is so strong there's almost no way around it. Moving on to the second reason the Aegis Towers were a mistake, the game forces you to play with it in your matches. There is no separate playlist in which the Aegis Towers do not exist. It's in every Battle Royale match, and it's in every Clash match. You cannot escape it. You are forced to play with the Aegis Towers in your matches if you want to play Spellbreak at all. There is no event playlist, there is no vanilla playlist, it's Aegis Towers all day, all the time. If you're like me, and don't particularly like Aegis Towers, then you're either forced to play a game you don't really enjoy at the time, or you're forced to put the game down and play something else. Which, if you've seen my recent streams, you know I've been enjoying quite a bit of Valheim, so this is incredibly evident from my channel alone. It's as if Proletariat, the game devs at Spellbreak, for those of you who don't know at this point, invited me to stop playing their game for the duration of the final piece of the chapter if I don't like the update. It's completely counter to what a game is supposed to be about, which is having fun and maybe a challenge here and there. Now, I have to find my fun somewhere else because there's nothing in the game that's classic Spellbreak anymore. Alright, now let's talk about the context of this particular update. Jesse revealed on Twitter that he forgot this update was on its way and it was developed all the way back in October. 
For one thing, it shows you how far ahead of time the devs are looking. The update dropped in March and it was developed in October. That's about a five month gap. But it also shows when they aren't able to post certain mid-patch updates for Chapter 1 that maybe their focus isn't on the present at all. It certainly seems that way for right now. I don't recall the vast majority of players saying that this kind of update would be healthy and enjoyable for an entire week. Especially with the current player base as small as it is, it seems inappropriate for an update like this that cuts down the depth of gameplay and one that can't be opted out of, which is the biggest offender, to be introduced into Spellbreak. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's perfectly fine and normal to have features developed way ahead of time in a serialized fashion at a battle pass like this. That's completely fine. However, I think the lack of a vanilla playlist and the lack of communication that something like this would be entering the game in the near future really shows a disjointed relationship between the game developers and the players, or at the very least a severe lack of planning. This kind of game mode is not something that everyone enjoys, and even more so, it's not something that everyone still playing the game would get behind. It's inherently divisive. And with the knowledge that the game's population would continue to drop as the game moves forward, with no significant long-lasting or prestigious progression, and a severe lack of marketing, you had to have known many players would not find it enjoyable at the very least. It seems like the developers have their sights set far off into the future, developing a future chapter with very little focus on the present day live game. It may not literally be that way, but there is very little being done to address mid-patch updates, balance concerns, or anything small like that. In Chapter 1, it took 7 weeks from the day of release to barely get a passable balance patch, and we haven't had one since. I think the broader point here is that this update was not implemented with the present day in mind, and that absolutely shows as now player counts are at an all-time low due to dissatisfaction with the way this patch has been implemented. And now we get to the present day, when a lot of Spellbreak creators and community members are upset about the Aegis Towers and their effect on the game. It's pretty clear among prominent voices that the Aegis Tower update was not well received. Initially, it was thought that the update would only last for a week given the duration of past updates and a message from Jesse describing the week of tower power. And the very next day, the official Spellbreak account on Twitter posts a tweet that says, Great news! The finale of Chapter 1 has been extended until March 24th, two weeks more than initially announced. This was announced at a time when everyone was ready for a potential announcement on a future date for Chapter 2, and at a time when everyone was still upset about the whole Aegis Tower update. And they called this great news. It is not great news to extend something that tons of people have no interest in playing. One of the worst parts about this, besides being tone deaf and disconnected from the community, is the way that the news was clarified. The tweet released the message to the internet on March 3rd. And it wasn't until March 9th that we got some kind of clarification as to when the Aegis Towers would get removed and cycled out. Out of all the ways that this information could have been conveyed, it took Twitch chat asking Andrew on a community stream the direct question to get some kind of response. At which time, the news was given that the Aegis Towers were here to stay through March 24th. It was only after this info had been conveyed and the community collectively voiced their opinions that the official Spellbreak Twitter account addressed everyone's concerns about the state of the Aegis Tower update and why they couldn't do what the community wanted, which was to deactivate the update and return the game to a more normal state. Apparently, the process to revert the update would potentially break the current chapter system, and it could lead to unintended game-breaking consequences. There is nothing that can be done, and the Aegis Towers are here to stay for at least the next two weeks. If you were to ask me, we are paying the price for Proletariat's poor planning. They did not think through what kind of effect the Aegis Tower update would have had on the community. They didn't have anything in place to address the present day issues players were facing, and they couldn't even communicate effectively in a timely manner when the community desperately needed answers as to what was going to happen with the patch. Instead of coming out with a message and stating what the state of the Aegis Tower patch was, the players had to go out of their way to a Twitch community stream and beg for answers. It makes me so angry that we can't even get basic answers without having to pull teeth. It is so frustrating. This isn't the first time I as a community member and many others have had to deal with the decision made by Proletariat that we saw as detrimental to the game and what it represented. I've had two years of experience with this kind of thing, and I guess the real reason I'm upset is that the game is fully released, player counts are low, and the studio is either in over its head or it's not focusing on key things that other games do. It's as if they're behaving like the game is still in beta or early access or something. And from a consumer standpoint, it's unacceptable for a fully released game, even if it's free to play. 
This is coming from someone who saw something great in this game, bought the most expensive pack I could two years ago because I believe this game had something great and was a gem on the market that was a release days away from greatness, but too often they squandered opportunities, and I think this is a perfect example of that. Anyway, look, sorry for molding on the microphone, I just wanted to vent a little bit and express my frustrations with Spellbreak and the Aegis Tower update, because as of right now, I do not want to play my favorite game. I don't. The Aegis Tower update has pushed me away, shown me the door, and made me want to play other games, and it's frustrating. Hope you guys understand that I'm coming from a place of wanting the game to succeed. I really am. And as I always say in the community, if I didn't care, I wouldn't be molding. So, I hope you guys realize what place this is coming from, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, as far as the future of Spellbreak, I am really hoping for Chapter 2 to be something that I am not expecting. I think that at this point in time, Spellbreak is at a very, very bad place. I wouldn't call it a dead game. I would call it comatose. There is still stuff that the devs could do to make this game more successful and to really revive this thing, but I would be lying to you if I said that I did not think it's on its last legs. I think that the community relationships are at an all-time low as of what happened, and I think a lot of players genuinely are not going to be playing these last two weeks of Spellbreak, and to be honest, that is a damn shame. This is an opportunity for finishing out Chapter 1 that everyone should be excited about, but instead, it's almost laborious for a lot of players to play through this Aegis Tower update, and from what we hear from Proletariat, there's absolutely nothing that can be done. So, I really hope that you understand my frustrations. I hope that I'm conveying my, um, my grievances very clearly, and I want you to understand that I want this game to succeed, not just as a content creator, but as someone who genuinely loves what the game brings to the market. It is, there is nothing like this on the market. It is just that I have watched over two years this game development studio, or whatever you want to call it, squander certain opportunities and make decisions that don't seem to really make sense and not get very much payoff of it, at, if at all. It's just really frustrating. And I guess this was the straw that broke the camel's back and I wanted to voice my opinion. And that's all there is to it to this video. I'll still be covering Spellbreak in the future. Don't worry about that. But like I said, I'm not going to be playing it for the next two weeks. So I would be expecting maybe some outside content. Again, I'm playing Valheim quite a bit. You might see a Valheim video here or there. But for right now, I am not playing Spellbreak. So that's just my two cents on the matter. If you agree with me, great. If you don't, well, tell me in the comments. Anyway, like the like <laughs> sorry. Click the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content. I don't know what kind of content you'll see, but I like Valheim. I like Xenoblade Chronicles. I'm really liking how Crimson Desert is looking from Pearl Abyss. So if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff, that big red button is there for you to click. That's not to say, again, I won't be making spellbreak content at some point in the future. Again, I don't enjoy the update. And I'm probably not going to play for the next two weeks. So, again, what are your thoughts, guys? Do, do you like the new update? Do you think there's something that needs to change for Spellbreak? I understand that not everybody hates this update and a lot of people find it enjoyable. I and many others are just not those type of people. So, you do you and I'll do me. Let me know down in the comments. I will see you all out there.